Well hey and welcome back. As you can probably see, I'm doing a bit of heat treatment, which is something that I do in my spare time apparently. Now I've done a fair amount of heat treating recently, and it really got me thinking, just appreciating just how weird and special a material iron, or I guess probably steel, really is. Mostly because being able to heat it up and then quench it to change its hardness and its strength isn't something that most metals are able to do. Even the heat treatable, hardenable alloys of aluminium won't immediately harden by simply heating it up and then quenching it. Being able to do that with steel is really something that gets overlooked and I think underappreciated. And I'm not saying that heat treating is the only thing that makes steel or iron useful as a material, but I think it's fair to say that maybe a third of the steel things in my workshop are hardened, and if they couldn't be hardened, well, we'd be in trouble. Now, it's probably not surprising to learn that heat treating has been a subject that I've always been interested in, and in the whole time that I spent learning about it, one of the things that really blew my mind, and one of the things that I had probably gotten wrong a lot in the past, was assuming that heat treating steel, you know, hardening steel, would make it stiffer, because it actually doesn't. A piece of hardened and tempered high tensile steel is going to be no stiffer or hard to bend than a piece of unhardened low carbon steel. Intuitively, it doesn't make sense, but when you test it out, it actually is true. And it's something that I see people get tripped up on quite often. In fact, I even addressed it in a previous video, and unfortunately, whilst I didn't use the best example, I still got a bit of pushback regarding that point, because it really doesn't feel intuitive. So in this video, I'll attempt to show us and explain why heat treating doesn't affect it. But before I go on, I do think it's worth quantifying exactly what I mean here. So for the purpose of this video, we'll try and keep things less formal, and we'll define stiffness as simply a material's resistance to bending, or how far or how much it does bend under a specific load. And I'm sure it's probably very intuitive. A soft material is going to bend a lot more under the same amount of load as a stiff material. Now I'm sure quite a few of you would be familiar with one of these. This is a tensile test diagram showing stress and strain on a material. It just shows how a material behaves when it's loaded up under a force. These are usually derived from a tensile test, effectively using a hydraulic press to pull a piece of material apart. Now in this video we will see a very similar graph, although the biggest difference is that we're going to be looking at bending. The data should be pretty much the same, but the test is going to be different. And I think it's worth pointing that out because when we do bend a piece of metal, we also have to remember that the shape of the metal itself is going to affect how it behaves. I mean, take this ruler for example. With it horizontal, it can bend a lot more easily and a lot more further with the same amount of force than it would be if it was vertical. That obviously has nothing to do with stiffness, but the resistance to bending of that particular shape or cross-section. That's why for all the testing that we'll do in this video, we'll stick to one shape or cross section, and that's going to be a circle. Keep it the same across all the tests. So first off, let's just start off with the basics. What I have here is a piece of soft steel wire, maybe 2mm thick. It's not very strong and it's not very hard. Now if I start to push on it and apply a force, it starts to bend a certain distance. And if I let go, it springs back to where it originally started off. Now this type of bending and then springing back is what is known as elastic deformation. The bending isn't permanent. Now what we're able to do is plot the amount of deformation against the amount of force that it takes. And what we're able to see is that the amount of force that I apply is proportional to the amount of deflection that we're seeing. And as well as that, it is able to spring back. This straight line here means it's elastic. At least that's what it means when dealing with steel. And any other material that abides by Hooke's law. However, if I start to push it more, and I give it all that I can, it starts to permanently bend. This is what is known as plastic deformation, and the material won't spring back to its original position. And I'm showing you this for two reasons. First of all, that straight line. The slope of it represents the stiffness of the material. How much force you need to get it to bend a certain amount. In a textbook or a data sheet, you might see it defined as Young's modulus, and it's usually represented in units of gigapascals. For example, most steel is around about 200 gigapascals, and a lot of cast iron is about 150. With that said though, I don't think you usually use this sort of setup for determining Young's modulus. I think you'd normally use a 3 point bend test, but for this video, we don't need to worry about calculating it, so we don't have to worry about it. The other thing worth pointing out is that the graph also tells us at what force does the steel permanently bend and then break, 
but it also tells us how it does it, which is really important when you're designing and making things. For example, my old steel, which is what I have here, has this long curved section, which shows that the steel is inclined to bend and then deform a fair amount before it ends up breaking. Compare that to something like hardened steel, which is able to take a lot more force before it breaks. But when it does break, it generally happens a lot quicker without warning. And usually we'd call that material to be quite brittle. And for the most part, that is a lot of what heat treating is about. Obviously, outside of making the material hard, we also want to change and hopefully control how the steel behaves on a graph such as this. Now, if we look at the graph, we can see that a piece of hardened steel takes a lot more force to permanently bend than it would take with a soft piece of steel. That's why hardened steel, such as in a Tommy bar, feels like it is a lot stiffer than a piece of soft fence wire. It doesn't take that much force to get it to the point where it can permanently bend compared to the hardened steel. If you're not able to bend it or get it to the point where you can bend it, it can give you the illusion that it is a stiffer piece of steel when in actuality all it is is just stronger. But at this point, even if you still don't believe me, let's try it out for real. What I have here is a piece of 1045 round bar. It's medium tensile steel and medium carbon and I should be able to heat treat it to the high 50s rock will see hardness. But as it is at the moment, it's not hardened, beyond a little bit of work hardening, which really won't affect it. Now in order to test this, I'll set up a test bench on the mill. I'll move the vise to the far end, which will allow me to clamp in a long piece of steel. And to act as our bending force, I've nicked the weight off the back of the fly press. Now I've drilled a hole through it and I've removed the handles, so the weight comes out to being just under 9 kilos. Now the hole that I drilled was 12 millimeters, and the stock that I'm using here is half an inch. So the first thing that I need to do is turn the end down to make a step. This is so I can put the weight on it, and I can also use it as a repeatable stop. With the now sliding on, I'll turn down the end to a sharp point. With that now done, I can now get it into the test rig. Now to test this, I'm simply going to glue a ruler to a 1, 2, 3 block. There's no load on it, apart from the weight of the rod itself. We can now slide the weight on, using the step as a stop. And looking at it closely, we can now see that it has dropped by almost exactly 10 millimeters. It's almost as if I had planned it that way. What we need to do now is get it hardened and then test it again. Now getting it hardened wasn't as straightforward as I thought it would be, because the piece of steel is a little bit too long for the furnace. Now I don't think I could have hardened the whole thing, so I focused mainly on hardening the middle and the rear, which is where most of the bending is occurring. I'm pretty sure that section at the front is being supported by the hole that it's sitting in. With that said though, it still took a fair amount of work to get it hardened. The furnace needed to be red hot before I could take out the torch and then heat up the rest of the rod. At that point the furnace was hopefully hot enough and insulated enough to keep the lower half warm. I'll then quench it in a pipe filled with water, water mainly because it would ensure that the part got as hot as it possibly could.
With that said though, it didn't seem to get as hard as I was expecting. According to the hardness files, it was somewhere in the region of 55 to 53 Rockwell C hardness. I think I was expecting somewhere in the high 50s, but even still, that is pretty hard. Unfortunately though, it looks like my dipping in the water was a little bit uneven and it has warped ever so slightly. I think the end is about 2mm lower than it originally was. But what we're really looking for is how it deflects under load. And once again, as you can probably see, once it's loaded with the weight, it drops about 10mm, which is exactly the same as it did before. And it is worth saying that it's the same amount of stick out, same load, and the same piece of material, except it's hardened. But even so, the amount of deflection remains the same. It's not any more stiffer than it was before. With that said though, it is going to be stronger. If I put that hardened end, which I have now slightly tempered, in the vise, and I try and bend it, even with a pipe for added leverage, I'm not able to bend it. Compare this to the soft end. It does take a bit of force, but eventually I am able to bend it. Granted, this end is a little bit smaller, but it's only by about 0.7mm, which effectively is nothing. The real difference here is the tensile strength. So to end this video, I'll finish up by answering the question, why is it unaffected? Why doesn't heat treatment change the stiffness of the steel? And the reason for it simply comes down to, stiffness is primarily determined by the bonds between the iron atoms. The atoms are holding each other together, and when you apply a load, it's the bonds between those atoms which are going to be pulled or compressed. And the bonds themselves are not affected by heat treatment. With all that said though, changes to the composition of the steel itself can affect the stiffness. Cast iron, for example, is generally going to be a lot less stiff than steel. It does change depending on the type of cast iron, but it can easily be 25% less stiff. Most steel alloys though, even alloys with more than 10% of other stuff added in, is really more than 5% stiffer or less stiff than any other alloy. I think most steel alloys fall within about 190 to about 205 gigapascals, and very rarely do you see anything more or less. And that's about it for this week. I hope you learned something new and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next week.